Well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my wiring up a doorbell video. Now, it is 2018. I'm completely aware that they have a wireless feature. We're not doing anything wireless in this video. When I think wireless, I think of buying a whole bunch of batteries and wasting money. We're going to do it the wired way, the old-fashioned way that's been around for a long time. So I'm currently remodeling my house that was built in 1946 has never had a doorbell ever installed. Now, we are going to be adding this to the house in the future, but I still want to have the old-fashioned type doorbell. And you can wire this one in to where when you push this button, it goes through its features, but at the same time rings the chime like the old doorbells did. But that's for another video. I got this at Home Depot today. It was $44.99. I just walked in there and got it. They have a bunch of different designs. I like this one because it has 16 sounds. We're going to go through all the sounds. We're going to listen to everything. We're going to get this working on the table so that you don't have any questions if you're trying to install one of these. So this is not a kit. This is only the chime part of the doorbell. If you're going to install it from scratch, the wired way, you're going to have to get you a transformer. We'll explain the two and three prongs when we get there. You're going to have to get you some wire. This is 20 gauge, just two strands. It's a bell wire. Whenever you're doing your doorbell, you want to use bell wire so the next person that comes along doesn't say, oh my God, what was this person thinking? Even though wire is wire, use the right kind of wire. This was about $11. And you got to buy your buttons. I think that these are the best looking buttons of all of them. But there's a whole bunch you can choose from. All of this will run you under $100 even if you needed more wire. But I was able to walk into Home Depot today and get all this with no problems. So the only kind of special tool you will need is some type of meter just to check the voltage and make sure this wire is not live or hot while you work on it. So on your multimeter, we're going to put it on the 200 for AC, alternating current. Okay, so I have this little setup. We're going to wire everything up right here so you can see it in real life. And we're going to make sure this thing works 100%. Now I will throw a wire diagram in there. We're going to have time stamps in the video in case you want to skip ahead. So the first thing, you have to get you a 110 volt source. This can come from your lights. This can come from your wall plugs. So you're going to have to figure out a way. You may need to get an electrician to figure out how to get you wires to power the transformer. First thing we want to do is we want to make sure that these wires are off. Shut the breaker off. The black is hot. The white is neutral. The green is ground. So you still need to check different ones because people don't always wire this stuff up right so check them like this move around make sure that you don't have any power any voltage between these three okay so we have 110 power as a source but our doorbell doesn't need that much power so it steps it down with this transformer you need to make 100 percent sure you get the right one 16 volts okay so for the transformers they have the two and three prongs the two prong are usually for 16 volts and when you have three prongs, you see you get 24 if you wire to those two, 16 of these two, and 8 volts if you wire to these two. So the only thing you need to know about a transformer, in this situation, is going to step the power down so it's going to release heat. You need to mount this in its own little electrical box. When I get there, it's going to have its own box with its own little lid. So this screw is supposed to be able to clamp to the inside of that box. I just don't see how that's going to happen in this video. So we're just going to mount it right here so you can see everything. Okay, so when you're wiring stuff up like this and you got to go into a box, you need to put something in there to hold these wires down. So that, that's what they sell. You get this at Home Depot or Lowe's. So run your wires through, get them in a comfortable place, tighten them down. Now our wires are secure. We can go in and make our connections. We've got the same colors on both sides. Just connect them according to the color. So when these tighten up, they should start to twist the wires like that. So if it's not doing that, take it back off and find out what's wrong. You got these connected, take some electrical tape and wrap them all up together so that these can never spin off for some reason. There you go. And just put that neatly in the box, put your lid on it, that's done. Okay, so on the two prong transformer, 16 volts. On this one, we got eight across these two. 16 across these two and then 24 across the far two so we just want to put some marks here so we know exactly which ones we're using so we're going to wire it up at first with the front door button get it all working and then we're going to add the back door button to it so this is all the switches it has a light on it you just drill a 5 8 hole and the switch just kind of sticks in there so at first glance in the packaging they show a diode right there 
Now in the reviews, you hear a lot of people saying that you gotta hold the button down for the chime to go through its whole cycle. And I'm pretty sure that that's all around people not reading the instructions and not installing that diode. I just think it's weird, it's like sticking up right there. Let's check out, see what's in this box. So that's all it is. This real lightweight little box. This is just the cover. Okay, so pretty much you just mount this box, that cover just slips over it. So that's for the wireless feature, we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna wire to these three. Pretty simple, I like that. So you see how it's telling you to install the diode? Let's check this out. Okay, that's the first thing that crossed my mind, is it gonna have two diodes for the front and back door? And it does. Okay, so that's just the mounting for this little box in case you gotta do it in some sheetrock. That's pretty neat that it has that. And then we got our two little diodes that we need to wire to our switch like that. Shows the way the diode is supposed to be installed. Now, what I know about diodes is that they need to be pointing in a certain direction. So it is possible that we may have to flip it. So let's see what happens when we get there. So we're putting this diode in right now. Don't forget about it. So wiring up the chime, super simple. You got transformer in the middle, trans. This is for your front doorbell, and this is for your back doorbell, or rear doorbell. So we're just going to put this on here so that we don't mix anything up. That should have been an R. Eh. Now it's an R. So get you a good screwdriver, loosen these up. You always tighten these types of terminals by hand. So now we're taking our 20 gauge, two strand wire, our bell wire. Get your little wire strippers. You got your gauges right there, 20. We're gonna go ahead and strip the wires. So half an inch, three quarters, something like that. Okay, so we're just putting some bins on there. Can't find my needle nose pliers right now. It's getting them ready. So we marked them so we know we're using those two. We're gonna go ahead and connect this middle one from the transformer over here to T transformer. We're gonna go ahead and use the red wire, small wires, just snug them up. Connect it over here to T for transformer. Okay, so we just run in one straight wire from the transformer to the chime T for transformer. Okay, so this is the wire going through our switch, going to connect it to the transformer. So we're connecting it to the F for the front door. So then this wire right here that goes through your switch, you're gonna have to cut it and join each wire to each side of that switch. So that's all we did. That was super simple to wire up. Let's turn it on and see what's going on with this chime. Okay, so we're turning the power on. Did you see that light up? Okay, so I just turned the power on, the button lit up. Let's just see what happens. That's awesome. I'm excited, I'm happy, it was so easy. So I got lucky the first time. Let's switch the diode around and let's see if that's what's causing all these people's problems. So we're behind it again. Now pay attention to the direction of that diode. It's got a little silver side on it that's going in the direction towards the chime. If you don't know anything about diodes, they're gonna allow the electricity to flow in one direction. So a lot of people were talking bad about this set up right here so let's switch that around and let's see if that's what's causing the problem where you got to hold the button down to get the full cycle of the chime okay so you can see that diode has a little touch of silver we had that silver towards the chime we're going to put it in backwards so switching that diode around is actually the hardest part of this whole video so we got the diode switched towards the transformer let's see what happens now still works So the direction of the diode does not matter. It still plays the full tune. Now let's take the diode out and see what it does. So let's see what happens with the diode disconnected. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let's hold it down. There you go. So as soon as we let go, it stops. So you see when we take the diode out, we have to hold the button down 
we let go, it stops. So that diode must be installed in there. So shame on you, all you people on the internet that went on the Home Depot website giving this product a bad review, saying it doesn't work. You didn't read the instructions, you didn't have the diode in there. So like I said, it doesn't matter which direction the silver is pointing to, it works both ways. Let's get it back in there and finish this video up. So I'm not going to lie to you, it is hard to make sure that diode is in there. So tug on it, wiggle it, and make sure it's not loose. Okay, so another thing is you may want to wrap all this up with some electrical tape so you don't cause any type of interference with some uh, metal siding or any kind of trim or flashing you have in there. So we got it wired up. Now let's go over the volume and the quality of the sound. I'm gonna give you my honest opinion what I think about it. Okay, so the loudest one, let me give my opinion on it. Okay, so I can see an issue if you have like a giant home or something. My house is like 1200 square feet. That's too loud for my house. I'm probably gonna put it in the middle. But yeah, if you have one of these new fancy houses, this is probably not gonna be loud enough. So maybe I'll turn it up not all the way maybe about right here in my house so let's try to change the tune we're going to cycle through 16. don't like that one eh. You know what I really like that one when the season comes I am definitely gonna change it to that one <laughs> that one I'm gonna leave it so let's go ahead and wire that second doorbell in for the rear door and see how easy that is so we got our back door switch ready and our diode you need to get power from the same place so in other words you can splice anywhere in this wire right here to give power to your rear doorbell we're gonna go ahead and run it right here because that's just the easiest way to understand it we only need one wire for this so we're going to run it exactly like we ran that switch, but we're going to connect it over here to the R for the rear door. So we're going to go ahead and loosen this one up and run it right here. So a little tip, you bend your wire the rotation of the screw to tighten it. If you do it the opposite, it's going to want to come out and get undone. I can see why people were having problems with this, because if you just tug on that wire, it'll pull it loose. So you got to be very careful. Tug on that diode, it's in there. We take that wire and we're gonna run it to our rear door switch. You can clearly see how that's wired up. Just don't forget to put those diodes in there. So I'm gonna turn power on and let's see the switches light up. So our front door was on the bottom. Let's see if it works. All right, back door. 
All right, so let's go back to the first one. Okay, so I guess the back door one is just always that default chime. I guess that makes sense because you always know they're at the back door. So we're going to do a simplified wiring diagram in case you want to screenshot this. Okay, so on a transformer, we're going to run one red wire over to the transformer T on the chime. And that's a red 20 gauge wire. Okay, so we got our front and our rear doorbell switches. Remember to put that diode in there. We got our diode installed. It does not matter which direction the silver is pointing. So on the transformer, it does not matter which screw you use to go straight to the transformer. Whichever one's left, we're going to wire to the doorbell switches. So the wire that's left, we can splice it into two, or we can run two separate wires back to this screw. So we're just going to splice it in two, run one side to one switch, and then we're going to splice it to the rear doorbell switch. Then the other side of the front doorbell is going to be ran right here to F, and then the other side of the rear doorbell right there to R. So. There you go. In case you want to screenshot it, don't forget those diodes. So that's it for the video. I recommend this product to anybody. I am just amazed at how easy it was to set up. I, for some reason, thought it was going to be a little tricky because we had a transformer. There's nothing hard about it. Anybody could do this. Just follow the instructions. Wire it like this. Don't forget the diodes. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.